My dear Christian friends, I bring you greetings in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from the offices of the Presbytery of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. The blessings of the Lord be with you this morning as we hear his word. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we are so grateful to you for your goodness to us and for the opportunity of fellowship, the wonderful opportunity to see this day and to share with our brothers and sisters, irrespective of the distance between us, as we gather to hear your word. Lord, we pray that you will inspire our hearts and provoke us unto good works. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My dear Christian friends, today is the sixth Sunday after Easter. It is also the Sunday coming immediately after Ascension Day. Uh, Ascension Day traditionally ends the period of the Easter and inaugurates the season of, of Pentecost. And our theme for this morning is that they may all be one, stresses prayer by Christ Jesus for unity among believers. As Presbyterians, we know that that they all may be one is the motto of our church. And that also puts emphasis on the need for all the sources of heritage, Basel, Moravian, Scottish and indigenous Ghanaian to be united into one identity. And therefore, today's message is about unity, especially in a difficult time like this when we go through COVID. But our confidence is in the Lord that he will make a way even where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. In John's Gospel, chapters 14, 15, and 16, we are presented with an account of Jesus Christ's final teaching to his disciples. I'm sure that for most of us, we will agree that the final words of a person are very important, very significant, especially if the person is a great person like Jesus Christ. And so we find the final instructions of Jesus to be very significant for us. In that section, Jesus explained to them that he was or he is the way, the truth, and the life. Secondly, he promised them that the Holy Spirit will come. Furthermore, Jesus teaches about the true vine, hatred of the world, the work of the Holy Spirit, and how to overcome the world. The Bible says in chapter 17 that when Jesus had finished speaking these words or teaching these words, he offered what is known as the high priestly prayer. After these teachings, Jesus prayed for himself, he prayed for his disciples, and he prayed for all believers. It is instructive that in this prayer, which we take care of in John 17, 1 to 11, Jesus prayed for the unity of the believers. Let us learn from the text that we have read. So what are lessons that we draw from the text in John's Gospel, chapter 17? The Bible says from verse 9 onwards, I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. Verse 11 says, And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. So the first lesson I draw from verse 11 is that believers are called to live in unity. Indeed, Jesus talked about unity. And as we know, unity brings strength. A people who are united can do anything that is set before them. The Bible teaches us in the book of Genesis chapter 11 that a united people with one language built the Tower of Babel on the plains of Shina. When the Lord visited them, he dispersed them when he introduced multiple languages. And this is what we find in Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. Jesus, the Bible teaches us that God says, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. 
and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. That is Genesis 11 verse 6. God himself recognized the strength in their unity and we must also keep in mind the strength of our unity at all times. Jesus recognized the need for unity for all believers because he knew that there will be differences amongst them. Even among his own disciples, the twelve, there were differences. There was one Simon the Zealot, a revolutionary, and there was another, a tax collector, who in under normal circumstances would have been enemies, and yet Jesus could bring them together in a team. The Bible teaches us that some of them were fisher folks, ordinary men, fisher folks. And there was even one who took care of the bank, an accountant. Oh, if God, through Jesus, could unite these men, then it is important that we also live in unity. Because if we are united, the church will be strong. In the same way, the church today is also made up of different believers. There are some who are men, there are some who are women, there are some who are young, there are some who are old, there are some who are rich, there are some who are poor, there are some who are educated, some who are not very well educated, there are some who are can, there are some who are gone, there are some who are ever, there are some who come from um, other places, that gone by in other places. There are people who come from other countries in the world. That is why the God Presbytery is called a Rainbow Presbytery. We bring everybody together. There are differences. We have differences even in the way we perceive things. If all of us will insist on our own, the church will not be a place of peace. But we must learn to live in unity. And that is what Jesus teaches us. You see, living in unity is like Maybe let me use one of our local examples, preparing a dish of fufu, cassava and plantain. Usually the plantain is pounded separately and the cassava is also pounded separately. But when the two are put together in the right quantities, at the end of the process, one is not able to identify or differentiate between cassava and plantain. It is so well mixed up that a new identity is given. This morning I am here to tell you that in taking on the identity of Jesus Christ, we must learn to live in community with others. It is important that as believers we receive a new identity. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 tells us that just as iron sharpens iron, so shall a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. It is my prayer this morning that we will begin to allow each other to sharpen or to influence each other. Oh, let a brother influence you positively. I'm not talking about those who influence us negatively. But let us be sharpened. One side sharpening the other. One side influencing the other. Then we would all take on the new identity that Jesus gives us. That is why in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4, the ministry of his gifts are described as being meant for a purpose. The Bible says that they are made for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ, till all of us come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, at the end of it all, the goal of God's calling on your life is to make you a perfect believer. And so as we unite with other believers, as we live in perfect unity and harmony with other believers, this heavenly goal will be fulfilled in our life. Let me now turn to a second lesson, and I call it my last lesson, second lesson to be drawn from the text in John's Gospel, chapter 17, the prayer of Jesus for unity. Jesus teaches us that unity is the sign that believers come from the Lord. Jesus asks that the unity that believers have is a sign that they truly come from the Lord. Believers are expected to be one because 
Jesus and the Father are also one. You know, one of the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith, the Trinity, teaches us about the indivisible Trinity. No member of the Trinity acts without the cooperation of the others. All of God is involved in everything that God does. So it is important that we note that while different works may be assigned sometimes to different members of the Trinity, these cannot be separated from the full work of the one God. What we believe that the Holy Spirit is leading us towards in our lives will not be contrary to what God the Father has revealed or that God the Son has shown us. In the first reading from the Acts of Apostles, the disciples of Jesus, we are told, lived with one accord even after the ascension. They did not just live in peace, but they devoted themselves to prayer. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said of our generation. Many of us destroy each other, and we gloat over the destruction of our members. When the army goes to war, and one of the soldiers is wounded, we are told, usually, that the other members of the army try their best to rescue him or her. But among us, when another believer is wounded, when another believer is in trouble, we judge the person. We gloat over his destruction. We do not go around to provide support because in many cases, we are envious of them. Especially in a time like this when we are dealing with COVID. Many of our brothers and sisters who have fallen down, who have fallen sick, who have become victims of COVID, are talking about how we stigmatize, how we look down upon them. Let us remember that whilst unity is a sign that we belong to the Father, dissensions and factionalism and envy are works of the flesh, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Let us remember that in places where the believers are disunited, they send out wrong signals, and the enemy, the devil, is happy. The devil is victorious because he has brought factions amongst us. A church that is divided cannot stand. And Jesus calls us to stand together as a sign that we come from him. The poet Samuel John Stone has this song which I love. He says that the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by waters and the words. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. And then the verse is, elect from every nation, yet one over all the world. A charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace endured. Let us remember that we are called to be one. Oneness in Christ, a sign that we belong to God. Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, the living community bonded by love. The church is one because of this unity and we must demonstrate this bond of love. Whoever is not willing to be a part of this oneness is not a part of the Lord. Let us not seek to bring confusion into our churches. As we battle COVID-19 pandemic, we must not as a nation be divided along partisan or ethnic or ideological lines. Let us remember that God loves us just as we are and we must love our brothers and sisters just as they are. In Christ, there is no European or African. We are all humans made in the image of God. God cares about your heart. And He cares about the hearts of others. So living together in love is caring about your own heart and caring about the hearts of others. Let us work for the unity of the church of the Lord at all times, that we all may be one.
the blessings of the Lord be with you this morning as you hear his word and as you seek to activate the blessing of unity in your church. God bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for our time together. Thank you for your word that reminds us that it is your desire above all things that we will live in perfect unity. That we will not allow for factionalism and dissensions amongst us. And so we pray in the name of Jesus that Lord you will build your church and that you will pull us together. That the works of the enemy concerning the church of God shall fall because the hand of the Lord is upon us. We know that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty. And may this unity we have make us more mighty in Jesus' name. We plead, O oh God, that the blood of Jesus that speaks of a better covenant, you will speak for all of us, especially for those who have not experienced you, so that, Lord, they will come to a new experience, knowing you and living the way you want us to. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.